This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D show. This show is broadcasting live from the Podcast Detroit studios in Royal Oak, Michigan. For more information about the show or our network, please visit www.podcastdetroit.com. You are listening to what should be the number one ranked technology show on SoundCloud this week. This is the one and only IT and the D show. The thing I honestly haven't looked at all. Yeah, no, it's still, it's still not worked. It's, it's conspiracy theory. We are at episode 165. We have an amazing show for you. We're doing a motor, uh, the Monroe Comic Con recap. Dave and I are dressed as killer clowns. We'll be talking about that. <laughs> but not in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Segment two, we are lucky enough to be joined by none other than Rajiv Das, who is the CSO for the state of Michigan. We're talking about how a state secures their all the things, and it should be a phenomenal conversation. Segment three, we have Eric Keller calling in, who's a professor at the University of Colorado. They are coming into town with Techstars doing an event this Thursday Uh all but around SDN and how robots are automating network management should be a. We finally got back to geek stuff after last week. We we figured it's time. Um, so hey, we had good reason last week. We were trying to avoid the debate and all that fun stuff. So we had a fun episode. Yeah, That's exactly. What we needed to do. But we're back to business. This is the IT Vidi Show. Dave, you may fire one. Well, right. and, uh, but speaking of business, so today's episode is sponsored by Magic Jack for Business. Uh, get unbeatable, unbeatable phone service, reliability, and an incredible price. Starting at fourteen ninety nine per month per line. No nickel and diming. Powerful business features like auto attendant. Get two months free service at magicjackforbusiness.com slash IT. Be one of the first 100 and you get a free phone. So it's kind of cool. You know, you get two months free service at magicjackforbusiness.com slash IT. Be one of the first 100, get a free phone. 30 days satisfaction guarantee. The following program is intended for mature audiences. This is my, my Max Hedrum. And what you're about to witness is one of the most sinister sounding intros to a trailer to one of the greatest epics ever. <gasps> this is Billy D. Williams. Bob and Dave and I are enjoying a Colt 45 right now. And remember, IT in the D, it works every time. You're listening to the IT in the D show. Hi, it's Count Chocula, and you're listening to IT in the D. Whatever the hell that is. Just where do you guys think you are? The Library of Congress? Detroit? Beyond the Sun? Any of those, right? Take him to Detroit. No! No, not Detroit! No! No, please! Anything with that! No! I used to hang out at the Mogumbo Bar. It was a rough place, the seediest dive on the wharf, populated with every reject and cutthroat from Bombay to Calcutta. It's worse than Detroit. You will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Then don't come! Shut up! I f- Dig you IT geeks. This is Dre DeMatteo from Sons of Anarchy. You are listening to IT in the D. So what happens when you tap the angry beaver in the bumhole? <laughs> exactly. Come on. I'm <laughs> What the hell is this? I'm calling a break. We'll come back to the D show. Hi, this is Ralph Macho, and you're listening to IT in the D show. Wax on. You know what. Bob loves it in the camp. What's up, everybody? This is Billy Zapka. Sweep the leg. Listening to IT in the D show. No mercy. I may have to wipe the geek off. Hi, this is Martin Cove, uh, John Kreese from the Karate Kid movie. And you're listening to IT in the D. Yes, Sensei! Are we at a break yet? Hi, I'm Ernie Hudson, and you're listening to IT in the D. All you nerds out there. Nerds! Nerds! Nerds. Nerds! Nerds! What is a nerd? I'm a nerd, and uh, I'm pretty proud of it. This is Scott Stein at Big Pump Pump. IT in the D show is your hookup. Holler if you hear me. Yeah, you're in your underwear? I'm in my underwear. Hey, let's hang out. No, I'm sorry, honey. I have a headache. I definitely <laughs> want to see Bob in his underwear. That's a fact. That's why I like it in the can. Which kind of scares the shit out of me. Shut up, Barry. Hello, everybody. This is Ming Chen from AMC's Comic Book Men. I'm a techie. I'm a nerd, fellow podcaster. My favorite podcast is IT in the D. I just, I can't say no, and I don't really want to. Well, especially with the back doors open. It's just too big. <laughs> <laughs> it's way too big. We got screwed at the we same time. time. Yeah. Really? Should we talk about this? We tag team it. Should I keep going or should I stop? We just lost our clean tag on iTunes. This is Robert Hayes, the Ted Striker to my mother. When I'm not hanging out at the Magumbo Bar, I'm listening to the IT and the D show. It's worse than Detroit. 
Is there such thing as a meat hangover? I love my Monday meat steak. Hey, folks, this is WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan, and you're listening to the IT and the D Show. Tough guy. Ho! My name is Michael Zapsick from AMC's Comic Book Man. You're listening to IT in the D. Come. So, what would you little maniacs like to do first? The question isn't what are we going to do. The question is what aren't we going to do. Ludicrous speed! Sir, had you better buckle up? Ah, buckle this! Ludicrous speed! Go! Welcome. Thank you for listening. This is the one and only IT in the D show. We have hit episode 165. We are broadcasting live here in podcast Detroit in beautiful Royal Oak, Michigan. This is Bob the sales guy hanging out with Dave the geek. And guess who's back? Nuri the FNG is in the house. I missed you guys. We missed you. Well, we did. Until you brought us vegetarian euros. <laughs> I just figured that it was, you know, a welcome back present and stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah. He, he, Nuri, gone for weeks, first night back, what's he do? Gets his own euro. There's an entire oh, lamb, lamb. Oh an God, entire God. lamb on his euro. Us. Vegetarian. And now sadness. I'm paying for it because I'm duct taped to this chair. So please, <laughs> someone, if you love me, send help. Feed me cheese and onions on a pita bread and see if you live to tell the tale. No, seriously, who's going to wheel me to the bathroom? <laughs> do, us, do us a favor. Mark your calendars on the 6th of October. It is October already. We This How Thursday. Did that happen? Um, it came after the month before, which is September. Uh, on the sense. sixth, how calendars work? Yeah, uh, on the sixth, the which is you know, I used to work at a calendar factory, but I got fired because I was taking too many days off. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> on the sixth, this Thursday, we're having a podcaster meetup over at Activate Gaming. Uh, check us out, and we're gonna have a couple studio tours here over at uh, Podcast Detroit. And then the twentieth, we're having a meetup um, over at the Blackfin Royal Oak, which again should be a phenomenal time. They always are. No, no. Speed Speakers, no cover charge, just IT folks having great conversation. Find yeah, out. I mean, if you were at our pink slip party last month, I mean, it's basically that, just smaller. Uh, it's what we've always done. Uh, so, yeah, just, you know, you don't need to bring a resume. Just come on out, hang out, get to know people in the industry and network. That's the entire point. Check out itmedia.com slash meet, M-E-E-T, not M-E-A-T, which Nuri should have fed us. Um, so we'll, <laughs> we'll we'll worry about that later. Hey, well, we have a phenomenal show guest lineup. Segment two, we are joined by none other than Rajiv Das. He's the CSO for the state of Michigan. We want to talk about what the heck the CSO does to secure the state of Michigan. State, yes. Exactly. Uh, it should be a phenomenal conversation. And then uh, third segment, we got Eric Keller, who's a professor at the University of Colorado, uh, specializing in data networking. There's a team of folks coming in. Uh, this actually, uh, this week, uh, for a tech stars meetup, uh, talking about SDN, software defined networking and properties of software defined networking and also how, uh, robotics might simp- might start managing data networks. So I'm kind of intrigued to that conversation. Uh, but yeah, do us a favor, go to it and the and read up on all our things. Yeah. Hey, do us a favor. Um, if you like the show and want to take a minute out of your day, I would please do us a favor, go to podcastsurvey.org. No backslash, no anything, just podcastsurvey.org. It should take 30 seconds. Um, it's really important to the show, and we would appreciate if you uh, could just at least spend some time and fill out the survey. We'd appreciate it. The secret word of the day is Magic Jack. At the one question, you have to fill it out. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, podcastsurvey.org. Uh, we sincerely appreciate the 30 seconds you're going to take out of your day to fill that out. It, it means a lot to us. Yeah. So I, I want to dive in. I had my mind blown this week by one of the stories that I that I blew around. Uh, so Fight Club. We've all seen Fight Club. Uh, you know, we're not allowed to talk about it, though. But yeah. Well, Can we you, talk about it now? Yeah, we talk about it now. All right, fine. Yeah. Um, there's this theory going around. You know, and I love the one about Labyrinth, where basically there were many Sarahs uh, that had come through Labyrinth, and that was why the guy was crazy. Um, so this theory about Fight Club is the first half of that movie is the old 80s flick Cloak and Dagger, which I loved. Uh, It's got Dabney Coleman. It's got a little kid. It's about a a little Atari. It was basically designed to promote a video game from Atari called Dungeons and Dragons. Was it a popular movie? Did I just miss it? Or Uh, it was probably might might have been before your time. 
It was the eighties. It was it was, I was alive in the eighties. Not by much, but I was alive. Yeah, exactly. In the 80s. I remember uh, it, but it was beneath the radar. I'm not okay. gonna lie. Oh yeah, it was it's around. Kind of yeah, a cult time. classic kind of. Yeah, like, yeah, like totally. Yep. Thing. So yeah, but phenomenal. If you get a chance, go watch it. So it's right. it, and the, so the whole premise of this theory is that the kid in the movie, um, you know, his uh, mom has died, uh, and uh, his dad is you know a quote is kind of you know boring pilot guy dude, uh, you know, but and so he fantasizes and creates a fictional father figure who is also Dabney Coleman, but Dabney Coleman as this badass Jack Black character um, who's like a special forces you know, a guy and yada 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 who mm-hmm. guides him through, because you know, it turns out that you know, his video game is one that you know, somebody put some spy secrets in and so spies are trying to catch him and it's the fictional character, so it, it's basically almost the and it is the entire premise of Fight Club, where I mean, I'm not going to spoil it because if you haven't seen it by if now, you have it. You, yeah, go ahead. So it's- you know the the main counterpart is fictional, is not real, um, and, and so it it and it, but you know but it draws out the better part or this other part of his personality that can fight and you know because you're talking about like an 11 year old kid in Cloak and Dagger, but it's it's and I did I sat down and rewatched Cloak and Dagger after reading this and I was like holy crap I yes I totally it it could be wow interesting you'd have been so proud of me we were talking about spirit animals the other day and I said. My spirit animal is Marla Singer. And nice. nobody got the reference. I'm like, damn it, you guys haven't watched Fight Club. <laughs> so have you seen any clowns, Dave, lately driving around? Uh, there's one less walking around Fort Wayne, Indiana. Oh, boo. Because uh, we, knew, we knew this was bound to happen. We've been talking about this. Uh, so, yeah, there was a story um, on Rolling Stories. Stone. Well, no, there was a story on yeah. RollingStone.com over the weekend uh, basically talking about w- – this whole phenomenon with clowns, um, you know, showing up in woods and by the sides of roads. There was one apparently over in Clinton Township. He was about five houses down from my buddy's house yeah, in, in the quarter car wash. That I didn't see or else he'd be run over. <laughs> so uh, Hail Zombo. Keep yeah, going, right? exactly. Yeah. Well, for, well, and Bob and I have been yakking, you know, is, is it a marketing campaign for it? Oh, I wanted to drop that. You ruined <laughs> my, you stole my thunder, Dave. I, that was Sorry. my conspiracy theory. I said we've been talking I gonna, about. I was going to work up to it and make and I was it going to be so surprised. Big it was thing. Be awesome. I know, and you're going to pretend to be surprised. Sorry, um, but like, no, it's <laughs> it's not like they're just standing. Like I heard, they're like trying to like follow me into the forest. So like, they're, oh yeah, they're and they're engaging, like, and, and some like, of them have machetes and they're waving, you know, trying to wave people into the ro- you know, into the woods and that kind of stuff. So now here's my thing, and I was talking about this earlier. Let's say it is for, for the grand scheme of things a, a marketing campaign for it. And they put an ad out saying, hey, dress up like a clown and this is what you're going to do. Yeah. And and you're going to hold a machete and you're going to try to scare people. Uh-huh. Would you not cross your mind like someone's going to shoot me? Um, maybe. Yeah. But here's the best part. Now there's a Craigslist ad that came out in a city that asked people to dress as Vikings <laughs> and wield Viking Weaponry and hunt clowns. So now is in the, the forest. So is that a promo for that Son of Zorn crap show that's this on? Show's Son- terrible. <laughs> I wanted to like that too, and it's 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 bad. It's, it's not good. I think it's hilarious. What's wrong with standing out in your yard dressed up as a clown and just just standing there in and- your yard? Fine. Out in the random woods by the side of the road, not fine. But that could it also be your yard. Walking around Fort Wayne, Indiana, trying to scare people. Maybe Apparently also not fine because that guy got shot in the head. Woof. Oh. And he's all done now. Oh. So, yeah. So, it, it, it people, I get it. It's cute. You think it's funny. I think it's hilarious, but then the guy died. But so then, you, you, then you're so. risking it. Could, yeah. And you, some people are freaked out by clown, clowns. I have always been. Trigger freaked warning. Out by clowns. I'm freaked out by clowns. Right. Poltergeist as a whatever, however, nine year old oh, boy. I still watch that. Oh, shit. the one no, under the bed. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not no. do it. I'm I still do don't it. like that one at no. all. Um, so l- there's two companies out there that aren't happy with being uh, $100 billion companies. They want to own more, th- more things. And these Wouldn't that are, be all the companies? Yeah, no, but these are, these are two companies we use every day. Facebook and Google aren't content with being Facebook and being Google. Being Facebook and Google. Yeah. Facebook now wants to get in the whole Slack Spark business. Facebook for work. Facebook for work. And I think they've tried this. This is what their fourth iteration it's of kind of like Google with trying, social networking with, you know, Orkut and everything else they've tried. Yeah. So you yeah. there. You there, you know middle. Like Facebook, you're not going to be at you, work. You social do, you right. social do not do. <laughs> right. And Google, you'll never be social. And I don't know why you can't just be happy with that. Well, Google now is 
wants to get in the Amazon world where they're recreating an Echo to put on put in your living room. Yeah, so right. they've got their big product announcements tomorrow, which um, is the, their read like their, their their first phone was so great. You're going to want this piece of crap now, right? Um, so they're introducing a cell phone and an Echo dish device. Competi- well, basically, which a is whole, always home automation suite, right? Which is always great to introduce something a year and a half after someone else has done it and perfected it and added onto it. Yeah, right after everyone else has bought it. Well, but they're <laughs> relying on them being Google and you know people buying it because it's Google. And the level of integration Google has. I mean, sure, Amazon's great, but Google doesn't. Amazon doesn't have the same kind of information about you for customization. I totally see how Google could walk in. Use all the data they've collected about you already and make a really personalized product. Yeah. But the one thing Google's missing is I walk into my house and I go, you know, Alexa, play Van Morrison. Google Play Music. Um, is it as is it as deep as? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, I haven't toyed around with Google Play Music as much as I've toyed around with Amazon. So um, that that's the that to me I thought that was the differentiator. You could probably also order toilet paper from Google too. I, I already think. do. Okay, from yeah. Google. <laughs> No, no, for Amazon. Oh, yeah. Shopping Express. He's like, hey, send it to my house, and then some guy drives up with it. I mean, it's – I don't know. Bob we'll wants see. less people at his house, not more. Yeah, no, it's just one. I'm excited. One with a big truck. Um, but I, I don't know. I think both of them are going to – like, there's no way I don't think – because here's the problem, Dave, with, especially with Slack – for Facebook Slack or whatever they're right. whatever they're going to call it is, if you're on Facebook at work, you're going to get that. Uh, what are you doing? Right? It, it's not. As yeah, is acceptable. it going to look different? Is it right? Gonna, yeah, it has it, it to launched be, in what London? It's launching. Uh, it's not here. I think so. But it has to be a completely. Like, you can't be on Facebook at work and people are you know yeah and look over your shoulder like there, it needs to be a completely different experience. Well, because it, well, and it's also going to be physically impossible to be on Facebook at work and only be doing it for work because well, it's Facebook. I'm kind of worried that you know you post pictures from your really good weekend and it's like posting as Nuri Goat or Nuri for you know Nuri for work. You know, yeah, which, am I, am is I it my as? personal profile or my business profile? Here's me I, blotto out of my mind with like yeah exactly and I'm yeah I'm uploading all my crap to my Facebook for work to profile Facebook, yeah. Right. Or since Facebook automatically pulls in your pictures from your phone. They stop that. They stop that? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> because imagine the tomfoolery. Yeah. Did, uh, did, we didn't have Although a whole- I did love that meme. The uh, uh, When you open up Facebook, there's like four different screenshots of people clutching their chest. It's, you know, when you open up the Facebook app and you see camera roll <laughs> and you think you just yes. posted your nudes or something. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> did we have a moment of silence for uh, the BlackBerry phone? They've I think announced- we did five years ago. They've announced that... <laughs> They're killing something we thought was already dead. Dude, I saw some of the BlackBerry the other day. I'm like, what Stop, the hell where? is that? No, seriously. Um, I was out in Ferndale and carrying around a BlackBerry. My favorite has to be a government employee. I like the full keyboard. So my my second favorite, my favorite headline of all time. My second favorite is now the Detroit Free Press from last week that announced that the the lodge is full of poop water. Yeah, Um, (laughs) amazing job of uh, journalism there. Journalistic integrity, all because sewage just wasn't enough. You had to say poop water. That went a Pulitzer or yeah, exactly. But when when the announcement came that six thousand rim jobs would be lost. Yeah, um, that was just <laughs> just an amazing piece of journalism. Um, what for I miss BlackBerry? This. Oh, it was Research in Motion, right? Which God's, is the which is the parent company for BlackBerry? Rim job. <laughs> I'm, I'm googling this right now. <laughs> <laughs> Six thousand rim jobs on the line. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and I don't think the editor knew, and they published it. And now oh no, I'm sure I assure you they knew. <laughs> and but if you make a company time. called Research in Motion. Uh, mm. it's just rim, and then uh, the, yeah. you hire people, and those are their jobs. Yeah, and yeah, and you wonder if they had rim dot jobs as their career site. I don't <laughs> wonder if that's a thing. Anyway, but people losing their jobs is never funny. No, it's not. I know. So another great uh, conspiracy theory that came out. I don't know if you know read this or not. It was the radicalization of Luke Skywalker. Which, you know, basically... Hasn't that iteration been around for a very long time in one way, shape, or form, though? Yeah, there, there's been a little bit like this is like this actually put a whole lot of detail and effort behind it and, and research. And it, and it's it's interesting and it gives you a, a different certain point of view um, on the original trilogy. It's kind of like Karate Kid backwards, right? Where Daniel LaRusso was is the, the bad, bad guy. guy. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's you know, the three basic processes of radicaliz- radicalization that uh, they tend to go through are uh, they come from families where the father is absent. Check. Uh, have difficulty forming relationships outside the home. Check. Uh, be attracted to groups offering acceptance and comradeship. 
Checkmate. Uh, then they go into, you know, how, you know, Obi-Wan basically, you know, isolates him away from everybody, immediately gets him off the planet. And he lied to him about uh, lied to him over and the over Empire and over again. killed your father, and, you know. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really, really interesting. We'll, shoot the, we'll put the link in the recap. Um, and even all the way out into, you know, how Yoda continued it. And it's just a phenomenal thing. And it, it's, it's well, an interesting read. It gets to the point where even the stormtroopers were confused at execute order 66 who's the good guys and who's the bad guys they didn't know yeah it got to that point where well wait a minute we're friends with the jedi and then we're not friends with the jedi yeah yeah you know who's the terrorists you know they, yeah. they, how many innocent lives did the the rebels kill in the right. death star how many, what was it Clark, contractors, yeah, how many yeah. contractors right how many pipe fitters no that was only in star. return of the jedi death star was fully completed there wasn't any construction workers yet maybe Still bureaucrats janitorial maybe there's some good union yeah. jobs on there but i mean you know the contractors know um, I think Lego wins for customer service of the week award. Yeah, that was actually a very cool story. A kid uh, lost his uh, Lego minifigure um, from a set that he had bought, and, and he so he sat down at the computer and, and sent off an email to Lego customer service um, that basically just said, "Hey, you know, I I lost it. it, 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 it I want to make sure I pull this up so I can get this right." Um, and typically Lego or companies like that don't answer. No. And so the, and the yeah. customer service agent that got it, uh, did a phenomenal job. He just said, Hey, uh, my name is Luca. I'm seven years old with all my money I got for Christmas. I bought the Ninjago kit of the ultrasonic Raider. Uh, the number is nine four four nine. It's really good. My daddy just took me to Sainsbury's and they told me to leave the people at home, but I took them and I lost Jay Z X at the shop because <laughs> it fell out of my coat. I'm really upset. I have lost him. Daddy said to send you an email and see if you will send me another one. I promise I won't take him into the shop again. If you can, thank you. Very well written email for a seven a year old. Absolutely, it feels like a good lesson though. It's like don't take your toys to the shop, and the kid would never forget. Right, right. Um, but so the the guys, uh, the customer service agent sends an email back and said, you know, normally we'd ask you to pay for one, uh, and then goes into this whole thing how he went and asked um, the whoever the wizard is in, in Ninjago, right, um, and said, you know, they can send him one, and they're not only going to send him one, they're going to send him the other two that turn into the super figure, but it's really important that he not lose them, and it's a mission. And he has, I mean, just very, just, you know, play along with the kid and very very cool stuff. I thought. And according, you know, and he, he agrees that your dad says you shouldn't. So it's kind of reiterating yeah. your the parents. Yeah, thing. reinforcing the parental right, right. thing, which is nice. But that was like when I lost my BB-8 head on my uh, – Yeah. And I said, to like, I'm an idiot. My kid lost the head. Can can I buy another one? They just sent me one, which is like you're forever one of my favorite people just for doing that. So, Dave, let me ask you a question. Shoot. Uber's become now – it took – like last year, two years ago, we started using Uber, but it wasn't like – part of our everyday life we're now like you're worried like well i'll take an uber there but i won't find one like going to the rots keller on six mile or out in monroe or, or out in monroe but now we find out there's there's going to be an uber guy everywhere yep so the next iteration of uber is being introduced in a few cities which to me which is replacing busing so yeah. it's shared so nary get this i don't know if you would you do this or not. so let's say our uber rides 10 bucks all right. That's a, that's would, a you, Uber ride. would you take an Uber for $3 if you had to, like, bus, like, pick up people and drop off people and be, like, the third, fourth in line? No. In queue? I, I personally wouldn't. So that's become – that's. We don't know if it's going to be a thing, but it's trying to start to be well, a it's, thing. It's no different than carpooling or ride sharing. It's just you're paying for it at I, that pr- point. I'm pretty sure that I, I, I've seen that here in Detroit. I've opened up Uber and it says Uber X Uber Pool. And I think they Uber give pools the new Uber one. Pool. Yeah. I yeah. think they give you a time that they'll guarantee that you'll be there by. Right. And they did a study in Chicago with this, and basically said that they beat the local Chicago MTA seventy eight percent of the time, and it was only like a dollar fifty more than riding the MTA itself. If that was the case, I'd absolutely do it. Like if I didn't have a car and I relied on public transport every day, and Uber's like for just an additional thirty percent, we'll get you there faster and not in a smelly MTA car with a thousand of your closest Chicago friends. Right, like, totally. but as a driver, the you're stress, still making the same money though. Yeah, but the stress level just went three x because I'm not gonna lie. That one day I Uber drove, it was not. It was fun while they were in the car. It was stressful as hell finding them. Okay. Yeah. Well, I say, what would you prefer? Would you prefer four drunk bros you pick up in Royal Oak, or would you prefer four business people? All going to the downtown area. Because those four people aren't going to talk to each other. They're going to right. be like silent and sitting there on their phones or on their laptops. And they're not going to be throwing up in your car. Here's the – I mean that's great. That's a perfect situation. I'm thinking of like one guy's going to Plymouth. One guy's going to Royal Oak. One guy's going to 
Detroit one guy's going to or gal is going to. Well, I would assume just like with any ride sharing or carpooling, I mean, it'd have to be like at least similar destinations. Their intelligence is so smart nowadays. I was in a car talking to a driver, a driver in Singapore, and he said that it actually it would give me a pickup and saying your driver's completing a ride nearby because it knew that it was going to the same area that I was in. It would make me wait another minute or two, but I'd have a driver basically stringing rides together all night. Which is brilliant. So they already know where your people are going. They know where the pickups are requesting from. So why not just build a very easy route to get where they're going? I think it's smart because I mean that's the one common complaint you hear from a lot of Uber drivers is like the yeah, time between you know, rides. Yeah, yeah, totally. So the latest um, uh, Win Ten update was a lot of fun here at the studio. Uh, thank you, uh, new Real Tech audio driver that came down with it. So uh, that, how many computers did that kill there, uh, Dave? Uh, here three. Uh, four, actually, including the remote one. So four out of four computers died thanks uh-huh. to Microsoft. Yeah, so had to uninstall and reinstall the broadcast software in, in all the studios and on the remote gear. That was amazing. It was free. You can't complain about free. Yes, I can. You get free OS. Yeah. You get free updates. Don't break crap. And and, and But it's free. Don't break crap. It's but that simple. Don't break the, crap. You, remember? If you're not paying Mem- for the member, product, member, you are the product. Member berries? <laughs> yeah, member berries. You're the product if, you can't, if you're not paying for the product. Uh, well, then stop See? giving your OS away from free. Linux doesn't do that to me. No. Just saying. Or it's Apple. free. Apple generally doesn't either. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> and then uh, speaking of giveaway, uh, there was quite the uproar, uh, which, and I'm not in favor of this at all, uh, the U.S. transition control uh, of the internet over to ICANN. Um, I, no, sir, I don't like it. I, it's, I, I'm sorry. Like I get that, you know, the rest of the world thinks that it's a thing that should be under a, you know, not U S control. We paid for it. We built it over the span of 50 odd years. Um, you don't like it. Go build your own. So why did they, why, what pressure were they under to hand it over? And who was it? Who handed it over? Who was like, a no key one to the city? owned it. Right. Like key to this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, Whose liberty was it to own to give? So it was, it was, it was. Well, ICANN was already running things under yeah, a government yeah. contract. Sure. Um, so you know, you think of the the precursor. You know, it was a DoD uh, built the ARPANET, um, and then which became. I the thought Al Gore did. You know, he just signed a bill. Oh, uh, okay. and then just on Capitol Hill, uh, and then which then became the internet, uh, and then boom went global. And you know, there's always been you know the you know eleven global root servers and all that stuff. But as far as like master DNS control, you know, that's essentially what they've finally ceded um, over to ICANN. And I'm not, <laughs> I, I, I'm not a huge fan. I'm Who not. owned the ICANN? Uh, they're a nonprofit, and they've and, like the weird thing is, is like they've taken a lot of crap over the, the Cook course. Brothers. The Cook Brothers run ah, ICANN, right? Um, as long as that's Susan Komen. yeah, <laughs> they've taken a lot of crap over the past few years because you know the way they handle domain registry, the way they handle uh, like when new TLDs uh, come out um, and that sort of thing. I mean, it's it, it's not a good situation, and I don't think it's gonna. It's I, I certainly don't see it helping anything. Put it that way. Then then why do it for PR? <laughs> Pretty much is my, you know, it's, yeah, okay, you know, we don't know, we no longer control it. But. I well, because I told you be. midweek, like I said, all these, like all the conspiracy sites, like the Infowars sites, and I never give any of those credence, but they were, uh, uh, Obama's handing over the internet to the UN. I'm like, Dave, what is this crap? Like, is is there any credence to this? And all of a sudden it goes down, but that's not what we did, right? Like the UN isn't part of, I, I mean... <laughs> To me, I thought that was sensationalist journalism. It, right? it, it is sensationalist journalism. I mean, it's one of those things where you know, ICANN is a nonprofit, um, and they do have a board uh, that's made up by you know international tech executives, you know people that are actually that actually know what they're doing, and Cook that's brothers. fine, huh? <laughs> Cook brothers, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but I mean, it, it's still, I mean, I it it seems silly to me to have spent that much time, effort, and energy and money over the years. Building it to then just go, okay, yes, yeah, someone else can run this. It just, I, I don't like it. You know, I, you know, the, the, the implications or the, the potential ramifications are it now becomes easier. Um, you know, you look at, uh, uh, I'm completely blanking on the name, uh, the summer revolt. Um, Arab Spring. Thank you. Uh, you know, it becomes a lot easier to suppress that because now things aren't quite as, you know, you don't have to worry about the implications of free speech because, well, it's not run by the U.S. government anymore, which guarantees free speech. So now let's just go ahead and shut off entire swaths of the Internet over Ooh, there. Interesting. I so, didn't think about that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's 
it, it's not – you know, every, while everybody was been so worried and, and complaining about uh, like bandwidth throttling and Do you want another Silk Road? This is how stuff. you get another Silk Road. Exactly. You know, this, Let, yeah, let's welcome, be honest. Yeah, welcome to Internet 2. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, Internet 2 already exists. We need Internet 3. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But hey, we're gonna uh, we got to take a quick break. We're bumping up against the bottom of the hour. Um, we are going to be back with Rajiv Das, the CSO for the state of Michigan. Wait, wait, before we go, I just one one more cool thing. What? Teddy Ruxman comes back next year. Ah, stop talking. <laughs> this is the IT that he's showing. We will be right back. It is I, the lyrical miracle, the sexual intellectual, the cunning linguist. And the quintessential stud muffin, Joel, if you can't find your woman, it's because she's with me. And we are both listening to IT in the D. Gertner, keep listening and have yourself an eargasm. IT in the D. Read. Meet. Listen. Networking Detroit, one beer at a time. Hey, this is John Schneider from Nip Tuck Smallville, the haves and the have-nots. Oh, Dr. Quinn, hot in Cleveland. Secret Lives the American Teenager and just about everything you can possibly imagine. And oh yeah, the Dukes of Hazard. You're listening to Bob and Dave. See IT in the D show. IT in the D dot com. This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D show. Welcome back. Thank you for listening. This is segment two, episode 165 of the IT and the D show, broadcasting live here in Podcast Detroit in beautiful Royal Oak, Michigan. This is Bob the Sales Guy hanging out with Dave the Geek. Nuri the FNG is in the house after traveling the globe. Find us online, IT in the D.com. Do us a favor, check out the meet tab. We got a couple meetups coming up, and uh, we sincerely appreciate it. And do us a favor. Go to podcastsurvey.org. It's about a minute long. We sincerely appreciate the time spent. The secret word is magic jack. The secret word is magic jack. Do we have to like scream and make like funny gestures and like lights flash when we say the magic word or no? No. Oh. It's not that show. But uh, speaking of meat, can we uh, give a shout out real quick to Randy for fixing my epic screw up tonight? Randy Walker, our Twitter guy, brought in delicious Telway burgers, gut bombs, grease burgers. Dave's loving it because the smell of onions has permeated the entire podcast Detroit studio. I was good with them being here in the building, just not here in the studio because Jesus. It not. smells better now than in Midtown Mojo. I'm, I'm much happier. Motown, 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 Motown. I'm much happier right <laughs> now than I was. Dumb. I know. Five you're you're actually smiling, which, which right. is a good thing. I got, I got actually eat, got Bob plus vegetarian food equals cranky Bob and yeah. nobody needs no, that. No, bad, yeah. bad. But hey, we are, uh, we're very lucky tonight to be joined by none other than Rajiv Das. <clears throat> He's the CSO for the state of Michigan, which uh, I don't even know where to start. You're Glad to be here. Thank you for coming yeah, out. Yeah. Appreciate it. You drove yeah. all the way in from Lansing. No, we sincerely appreciate the time. So, I mean, we, we kind of know what the CISO does for like a major corporation or a network. Talk to me about the state of Michigan, what you're looking to accomplish in, in terms of being the chief uh, you know, information security officer. So, Bob, not too different from what uh, happens in private sector. Okay. Similar thing. So, goal one is how to keep the state of Michigan assets, informational assets, safe, which is apps, data, network. How to keep it safe, basically prevent it from bad guys. So what we do, we take some steps, like, you know, yeah, I'm sure firewalling is one. We do some other steps like data loss prevention. So we install tools to make sure data is not walking out. Uh, we intrude in software, uh, so, you know, on a daily basis, you get multiple attacks in millions. Some of them are real, some of them are not real, uh, but you need to assess all of them. So we have a SOC, uh, 20, which runs almost 24 by 7, to manage those things. So those are the f- three things, we, three or four major things we do. But apart from that, you know, awareness is important. We have approximately 50,000 employees. 50,000. 50,000. Wow. And, you know, each one, each employee has a desktop at least. Some of the employees have three instruments, a tablet, a phone, a desktop. So how to educate them to make sure they don't uh, fell, uh, you know, prey to a phishing scam. Phishing sure. Phishing scam can be an email, a very non-suspicious looking email with a link. You click the link, you're history. 
So give so, me an example of like some of the data that might be at risk because I'm I'm just thinking from a state yeah. standpoint. So if you look at the state, state is a you can call it uh, a conglomeration of businesses. You have DHHS, Department of Health Human Service, which deals with healthcare data. You have Treasury, which deals with all the financial data. And you have other areas, Department of State, which basically gives you the driver's license. It has all the personal information. So PII, which is personal information, HIPAA regulations, which basically govern the healthcare data. Treasury has a regulation called IRS 1075. So you have to be compliant to these regulations to safeguard that data. You're also so, processing credit cards through the SOS, so you're doing PCI as well probably? Yeah, we are doing PCI. The good thing is state is not storing that information uh, within their good. domain. But for milliseconds, it stays there. Of course. So we have to have PCI compliance. Yeah, it's transit data, not rest data. Exactly. Right, which is really interesting. I mean, I think of like what a, a security officer does for – a regular corporation. And so if, if Target gets breached, they get my debit card, right? Uh, if, you know, most companies, when they get breached, it's a very small segment. But you're right. Yeah. The state of Michigan has everything about me, where I live, my income, because you have my tax returns, That's my driving correct. history, That's my uh, my criminal history, pretty much every – well, I have none. Every, yeah. Just to clarify that for everyone listening. Um, but basically That's everything – That's you're sticking to it? Uh, <laughs> Just don't go looking and – no, never mind. Um, so you have everything about me, really. Everything. So it's such a very important mission to secure our, our data. So a lot of data, very critical data, and uh, we, we do everything to safeguard it awesome. on a regular basis. So how often – how many times a day would you say someone comes after uh, the data in the state of Michigan? I would say we get approximately – the last numbers I remember is probably 1.63 million attacks a day. Woof. And, wow. And then it varies – you know, hour by hour. Most of it is during our daytime. Nighttime, we see some, sometimes low activity, sometimes high. Interesting. Interesting, yes. Yeah, But wow. now, again, um, all these are machine-generated attacks, as you know. Some of them are bad DDoS. Some of them are just phishing. Some of them are just scanning. Uh, so we correlate all those things. And we are trying to get to a stage where we can correlate all, this atta- all these attacks and uh, detect a pattern, so we are proactively trying to manage. find the hay in the haystack, basically, right? Yeah, yeah. So, what are the repercussions? I, we know what they are for Target. We know what they are for Wendy's. What's the repercussions for for the state if you were to get a major data breach? Uh, loss of credibility, number one, uh, of course, accompanied by financial loss. Sure, financial sure. Penalties. Uh, so, you know, if you uh, lose your credit card, uh, sorry, your personal information or HIPAA data, there are rules where we have to inform you, we have to get you the counseling, and of course there are some financial penalties, such as PCI. If you're non-compliant and a breach happens, uh, there are penalties associated with that. Now, last week we, we read an interesting, uh, was it published in the Journal of Cybersecurity? I forget which, which was the exact journal name. Um, oh, yeah. But they, it basically came out and said, the the cost of a breach doesn't equal. You could basically put in zero security. That it's cheaper to have no security than and deal with the, whatever the repercussions are than it is to follow all of the policies, procedures, rules, requirements. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, what you know, uh, cost of uh, bre- average cost of breach is three point eight four million these days. The average cost yeah, of a average breach. Cost. Well, and that's so. The, and actually, that was one of the things they were talking about yeah. in the survey: is where does that number come from? Because like Target got breached, and then their stock went up. <laughs> what? <laughs> like then, Tylenol then, had the cyanide uh, scare, I, I, I and people bought more Tylenol. Three point eight four came from IBM. So IBM must be. Oh, the working. guys who brought you WebSphere. <laughs> <laughs> they must be working with multiple clients, and you know that that. So it it was three point seven four. It became three point eight four. Gotcha. But uh, answering your question, Bob. Sure. Doing nothing is not an option. I didn't think it was. Yeah, so nothing. that was the mind boggling. Exactly. That would get published no. in a cybersecurity journal. Yeah. Doing nothing well, is not an option. No, it's an option. Yeah. It's just not one you should take. tear down these <laughs> firewalls. Tear them down. Yeah. Nobody is ready for that. Yeah. So so we do uh, at State of Michigan. We take it very seriously. Governor Snyder is a very um, stringent requirements for that. 
Uh, he has, we had a former IT CEO. I would think he's got a pretty good uh, yeah. leg up on. Yeah, we, we uh, kind of lead uh, other states and nation in a few things. We have a cyber initiative 2015, which we are going to update. Now it will be called Cyber Initiative 2017 and beyond. will include Internet of Things there. Uh, so we are taking a lead. We are going to do a lot of uh, work within cyber analytics. So basically, it's a collection of not only the uh, data which comes as an attack, but we collect tons of data, logs, application logs, this and that. So we correlate all of it and basically uh, try to come up with actionable intelligence. That's the word. It's, actionable intelligence. Well, I mean, I mean, if you have so much of your attacks and most of it's noise, yeah. how do you go chase noise? You, you really can't. You have to have some way to correlate it and make some kind of pattern for either a human operator or for some kind of machine learning to go shut something down. So the cyber analytics framework, which we are putting together at State of Michigan, will enable us to do that. Now, we, we are going to use tools. QRadar is one which we are using. There are multiple tools. Of course. Uh, yeah, every state or every entity adopts it based on their convenience. So, yes, that, that will be goal to how to correlate the events, how to detect patterns, and uh, basically safeguard that particular zone. It's so important. And, and, it, and it gets more challenging every day. Um, basically, people are developing new methods of attack. People, cyber criminals are getting smarter. Absolutely. How is Michigan staying on top of that? Other, I mean, you mentioned your 2017 initiative, but a, what are you guys doing to? Very, a very simple thing: patch management. Patch man. <laughs> I'm telling you, no. It's amazing how much of it comes down to that. I, I will tell Cheers. you, it's a, it's, a, it's a such a simple thing. But anywhere you go and say, "Hey, have you updated your network or your machines to the latest safeguard?" And answer will be no. I'm still running XP embedded. What are you talking about? Uh, it doesn't need a you, patch. I'm telling you. No, it, it's not easy. It's not easy. But you, once you have an automated process these days, a few years back, you have to do it all manually. Not anymore. Sure. So if you have a good process installed or pra- you're practicing a good uh, best practices, patch management will solve most of your problems. That's patch interesting. Management. Huh. And, and uh, the other thing I call is cyber hygiene. So no matter, you can have the best breed tools, you can have the best uh, consultants working with you, but if your employees do not know this or practice cyber hygiene, it's not good. So cyber hygiene, I call it a, a key thing uh, in, your, in your DNA. You know, you can do it personal basis, you can do it institution basis, which is application security, but you need to teach every employee. So we take that very seriously. And uh, we have a program, awareness program, uh, which we make sure that everybody follows and uh, gets trained. Well, you got to think, I mean, 50,000 employees, and a lot yeah. of those are, are frontline employees. That's correct. These are people taking tax payments, people processing driver's licenses. That is your weakest chain Absolutely. in a security apparatus, basically, right? So, and I'll tell you, the emails, they look so non-suspicious. Oh, yeah. We, we get them at work, actually. Our, our company does that. They test us as employees yeah. all the time. Where we'll well, get, see, at Cisco, we knew they looked so bad. I know. Ours are good. Ours <laughs> oh. are really good. So I guess we're, we're buying it from a better vendor than you guys are. But, <laughs> but I'm, right. And basically, there's a process that you're supposed to do when you get one of these exactly. emails. And basically, that's that's the test, right? If, did you follow the process when you got a, an email that was not trustworthy, right? So exactly. it's, yeah, it's great. We call those the, the grandma emails came out this morning. Be on the lookout. you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I am a Nigerian prince. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They're better than that, folks. They oh, right. are. Oh, yeah. they're, they're getting smarter. Every now, day. so what do you do? What, what is the state doing? I guess from a, I know you talked about training and all that, but from a social engineering standpoint, which I think is greater than the worrying about Russian hackers, is yeah, is data uh, loss internal. I'll give you an example. Four weeks ago, somebody calls me on the phone and say, "I'm with this vendor company, and I met you at a conference, and I didn't recognize that number. And can I have your email address so I can mail you the information?" Ooh, and pretty good. Certainly, my training kicked. Up. Kicked off. But you go to a lot of conferences, right? Plausible. But I was almost ready to give her my email address. And suddenly, I don't know, I'm not patting on my back. but uh, (laughs) So I said, uh, listen, if you were with this company, I already know a few people there. And I'm going to call you at this number. And if you pick up, then I will have some more conversation with you and we'll give you an email address. 
called back on the same number, no response. Interesting. So uh, this is, and again, uh, the only way we can drill this into the employees is by having training, role playing. So it's not going to be easy. Social engineering, I mean, they are getting smarter day by day. So what I do when I do these training, I make sure my kids do the same training to some extent. Sure. Yeah. yeah was, I, believe me, the millennials, they are very naive. And they they can eat because they're so 90, open 90, and trusting, man. <laughs> we don't sound like that, Dave. <laughs> Right, and the problem is like I'll bet you, you did us, most of the weekend. When you got old farts like us, we've grown up with the internet and we've seen all the garbage. Yeah, right. We've well, learned we're how to bitter filter. and cynical, and totally. <laughs> we trust no, even if it's from you. I'm like, is that you yeah. or is it spoofed? Exactly. But then there's the elderly too. I, I joke with these guys all the time that we need to start up a talk to your grandparents about online scam day, and I think that should totally be a thing. So anyway, it's true. It's true. So, uh, again, going back, uh, state of Michigan has taken some uh, leadership role among other states, doing data analytics, incidents response, putting together cyber strategy. Uh, we share that with other states. Uh, we are having on 17th. Uh, yeah, I was going nice, to say, you've got a conference coming up two uh, weeks from tonight. Two weeks from yep. tonight. Great summit. Uh, will be hosted by Governor Snyder. We have a lineup from defense, industry, uh, public sector. Uh, we have breakout sessions. Uh, we will have keynotes. So very interesting lineup, and uh, I think it will benefit citizens, businesses, and employees. How do we find out about that? Uh, please go to www.michigan.gov backslash cybersecurity. Cybersecurity. Yep. Perfect. $74 to come in, but you get wealth of knowledge. It's time worth which is cheap these days, considering how much con- some conferences and, cost. And, and if you are a, like a student or educa- part of an educational organization, you get in free. Nice. Yeah. Oh, very cool. It's at Kobo. Kobo. Hey, so we'll sure we'll get that in our uh, show wrap-up notes. I'm sure Randy's probably tweeting it out right now. Well, and yeah, I think we may want – I think we're going to wind up uh, yes. being down there with the remote gear, uh, doing at least you know some interviews and that kind of stuff based on a couple emails today. So we'll see how that goes. I'm sure okay. we'll talk about it next week if we are for sure. Perfect. Can I share one more thing? Of course. Of course. So in Michigan, we have done one other unique thing. It's called Michigan Cyber Civilian Corps, Voluntary Firefighters. What? So we have got a volunteer organization of approximately 45 people, different industry, spread across the state. So in case governor declares a cyber emergency, these people will get together on a network and work. There he's signing up right now. Yeah, I actually, I'm, I'm totally on the website <laughs> yeah. right now, micybercore.org. Cyber, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, we do exercise on a weekly, uh, sorry, not weekly, uh, semi-annually basis. We simulate tabletop exercises, but uh, we uh, feel that this this is a unique thing, and the other states are already taking notice. So Michigan like a very Cyber cool Civilian Code. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't even know that existed. And now yeah, you, you would think somebody would have brought it up. You know, with all the stuff we do with the state of Michigan, you would think so, you would think somebody would have brought right. that up to us. At some hey, have point. you thought yeah. reaching out to you know? Yeah, only forty five people. Maybe they want to keep it small. You know? Right. Yeah, but we will grow. So our target okay. this year is to go to sixty. And uh, and again, these people is there a minimum? Uh, is there a minimum requirement there in are, terms of there education? Minimum, yeah, there are some minimum from requirements. background check. Background right. check. <laughs> no, no, you're right. You're right. Hello, background I'm check. From minimum Soviet requirement. Russia. Can I could join cybersecurity? <laughs> Some certifications, and we train them. Uh, we offer them toolkits. We offer them the email addresses. So this is a very unique thing, and I think it will help us. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. I'm definitely going to take a look at that. Please. So, hey, Rajiv, appreciate your time spe- coming down from Lansing and spending time with us. Lots of good information. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Rajiv Das, CSO of the state of Michigan. Um, we're going to be back with uh, Eric Keller from uh, University of Colorado talking about uh, software-defined networking. This is the IT and the D Show, and uh, we'll be right back. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Yeah, this is the WWE legend, the War Machine Rhino, and you're listening to the IT and the D Keep on listening or I'll rip you in half with a gore. IT in the D. Read, meet, listen. Networking Detroit. One beer at a time. Hi, I'm Brittany Daniel from The Game and you're listening to IT in the D show. IT in the D.com. This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D show. Welcome back. This is segment three. 
episode 165 of the IT in the D Show broadcast and live here in Podcast Detroit. Beautiful Royal Oak, Michigan. This is Bob the Sales Guy hanging out with Dave the Geek. Nuri the FNG is here in person. Randy, the Twitter guy, brought us Delicious Tellway and uh, sitting in studio with us. Find us online, IT in the D. Dot com. You know, and one th- I, real quick, one thing we did not mention uh, in our opening segment, you know, we were out at Monroe Comic Con uh, this past Saturday, had a great time uh, doing the remotes and everything from there. And what the a cool show. Panel. was a lot of fun. A uh, bit of sad news, uh, in case you haven't heard and you were one of the people that were there and you're in, the co- you're in and around the comics industry or no comics or, you know, Caliber Comics or Dead World Soda, uh, Gary Reed uh, apparently passed away Sunday uh, rather unexpectedly from a heart attack. He's been here on the show before. Uh, great guy, very sudden loss, very tragic, uh, you know, thoughts obviously with his family at this time. But hey, we are joined by Eric Keller as a professor at the University of Colorado. There's an event coming up this week called Robots That Run Your Network at Techstars Detroit. And they reached out and um, thought it would be an interesting conversation. But Eric, appreciate hanging out with us here on the IT and the D Show. Yeah, I appreciate you guys having me. This is a, this is a first for me. I, I've never been on a podcast well, we, well, that's okay. We never did one before we started one. So, yeah. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> so I guess let's ask right. the let's ask the elephant in the room question. What what the hell are a bunch of professors doing from the University of Colorado coming to Detroit to talk about software defined networking? Yeah. So thanks. It's uh so so there's uh you know part of my philosophy as a so as a professor is you know we want to have impact on the world, right? That's that's the main objective, not just to kind of skate by and. In, in in our line of work, you know, uh, IT, you know, networking, uh, that's that's why I research. And you know, to have impact, you kind of have to have commercial impact. Uh, and so, you know, what, what I try to stress to my students is, you know, we got to get out there. We got to you know get in front of industry. We got to push our you know try to work with them, and and that kind of thing. So there's a program in the NSF uh, called the I Club, and what it is is it teaches uh, students and professors, you know, the commercialization process uh, helps us, you know, work through, you know, the kind of traditional processes, I guess. Um, and so they're, you know, they, they give us a little bit of money. We get to come out, work with them for a little bit. Uh, they're holding a workshop. It's hosted by the University of Michigan. And, but it'll be, it'll be in a hotel down, downtown Detroit. I was gonna say, how did you get oh, hooked? Yeah. How did you get hooked up with the we're tech stars? Out. I was gonna say, how'd you get hooked up with the tech stars guys here in Detroit? Yeah, so so as part of that whole process uh, of commercialization, you know, exploring that, uh, one of my students, Murad Kaplan, um, you know, we we created some technology we thought was pretty neat, and uh, so he went, you know, through, started going through this process. There's something called the New Venture Challenge at the University of Colorado. It's basically a a pitch competition. It, it lasts the entire year. Uh, ultimately, um, Rod won the TechStars Award, uh, which is you know so TechStars is uh, you know has a as an office in Boulder, um, and yeah, we we got this TechStars Award, and it's basically just you know they they got to pick which uh, which team they liked, um, you know some criteria, the most commercialization. So since then, we've been kind of talking to them, you know, meeting with them. And um, when we say we're going out to Detroit and we want to hold this event, um, you know, we, we asked, uh, if, you know, if they could put us in contact with their the Detroit uh, branch of Techstars. They hold, held a, a mobility-focused um, accelerator program in Detroit. And, yeah, those guys were, were great, and they, they offered to, to host our event for us. Awesome. So, I mean, the the title being, you know, robots that run your network. We're not talking about like physical, you know, robots like, uh, like in disguise. <laughs> Gosh, right. I'd love to replace my entire network team with a bunch of robots. I mean, come on, <laughs> that that would be awesome. No, this, some this days, yes. Came from, <laughs> it, it came from uh, a video we watched, an interview with uh, one of the architects, the network architects at uh, Facebook, and you know he. He put it in a cute way, I guess, and that's why it stuck with us. That he's like, you know, it's they're getting too large uh, to to do anything manually with you know with humans, and so they want to get to the point where they have robots running the ro- you know running the network, and then but then it's the the humans that are programming the robots. 
And so we kind of like that that phrase uh, and and went with it. So the, I mean, this thing's been in motion for I would say what five years. I was at Hewlett Packard when they were introducing SDN. And we all said, you know, like, you know, yeah, great. Don't even bother talking about it with your customers because it's not real. Um, but I mean, with the advent of, you know, hyper conversion infrastructure, um, I think SDN is a thing. How widely adopted is it in the enterprise right now? Oh, that's a, that's a tough question. I don't know how widely uh, adopted it is. Uh, it, it's definitely getting there. And so, it, I mean, it even goes back further than five years. I mean, I started my PhD 2006. And my advisor, um, Jim Rexford at Princeton, um, had been, you know, working on this uh, for for a couple of years. This uh, the paper, uh, you know, seminal paper in the the field is called 4D, um, and and it said, you know, so SDN is kind of, you know, set set some uh, basic principles, um, you know, like network level objectives, network wide views, uh, you know, topology, traffic events, and all that, and you know, direct control. And and since then, it's it's been kind of moving towards uh, that as we get more automation, more virtualized infrastructures, we, we need the automation. Wait, um, so I, I, I think it's only a matter of time. Well, isn't think, this how Terminator uh, started? <laughs> no. What's that? So isn't this yeah. how Terminator started with Skynet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think you're right. The networks are getting too large and too complex. I was out last week at the Splunk convention. And Splunk is basically a set of tools for log ingestion that pretty much any company is using. It's a competitor to Elk. But um, e- either way, that machine learning is starting to show up in these things, mm-hmm. right? Because you have so many logs, so many devices, and if you have humans sitting there looking for them, A, you're going to miss things. And Well, be- and even if you catch it, it won't be for six months. Correct. Yeah. Right. So it's mach- machine learning is really the buzzword in kind of like an IT DevOps space right now. It's, it's popping up everywhere. Yeah. Um, part of your other. Yeah, no. mi- oh, good. Uh, sorry. Is that- yeah, so, so, yeah. So I think, you know, along with uh, machine learning, uh, another thing that, you know, the kind of SDN, um, you know, approach gives you is the ability to, you know, have some sort of verifiable correctness. Uh, there's there's a lot of great work that, you know, if you have this kind of common interface where you see the entire network, you can actually verify uh, how it's going to operate before, you know, you actually d- deploy it. You know, it's, it's, I've been in too many com- conversations with, um, you know, some different network engineers and, the, you know, they've recently had to deal with a, an issue. Oh, yeah, we, ha- we had a misconfiguration and our uh, network went down for, you know, a couple couple of hours. And um, so th- that's one of the kind of, you know, things that that's actually, you know, fairly ex- exciting in the kind of, academic space at least and um you know i know of at least one startup um that that kind of has gone taking the work out of uh, out of academia uh and is, is trying to build it out it's called the uh, verifo hmm so hmm. so yeah so I, I think and you know and the, i think you know, at, so the, the first uh level was this kind of software defined networking um i, I think kind of where we're you know, the, what's coming up now is the, the network functions virtualization, kind of realizing, um, you know, we, we need actually more programmability in the network. And so, you know, how do we get more programmability? There's kind of efforts on the, um, you know, data plane side of, you know, new the kind of new open flow um, approach called uh, P4. But then there's also kind of, you know, being able to run traditional middle boxes in software in a virtualized environment. That's a huge thing. We're Get that uh, orchestration. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're starting to do that now with, uh, I work a lot with the Cisco stack and from the voice perspective, Cisco is actually virtualizing things that have always required bare metal routers. Yep. So things like our, our virtual voice browser, our SIP proxies, places where we terminate SIP trunks, all that stuff is moving virtualized because nobody wants a gigantic for you router sitting in a data center. So that's, that's totally awesome. And, and I'm glad to hear that other parts of the industry are going that way as well. Now part of- yeah, no, it's exciting. And so, you know, I think there's, uh, you know, we're, we're definitely looking in that space, you know, trying to understand, all right, you know, what's what's different in this world. It's not just take a physical box, put it inside, so, you know, software and call it a day. Right. If we want this kind of ability to orchestrate 
you know, this elasticity, uh, the resilience that, that should come uh, with these, you know, virtualized network functions that kind of got to rethink how we're, how we're doing things. Now, a part of uh, the other mention of your event this weekend is, uh, or your event coming up, is to bridge the gap between academia and industry. Uh, what would you say are the biggest problems is that? Is that a, a communication thing, or is one way ahead of or behind the other, or, or where are you finding challenges in that space? Uh, I, th- I think it's, it's both, uh, you know, the whole, whole bunch of things. So I think one is communication, like you said. Uh, we, you know, probably don't talk each other enough um you know in in the academic world we're following kind of the the main research you know the main conferences uh the papers that are going and and a lot of times they are working with industry so you know google is publishing what they're doing with sdn facebook's publishing what they're doing microsoft is as well um but not, not everybody has time to to read all those papers and at the same time you know, I'm not running a live network, so I, you know, I don't understand, you know, the the nuances of, uh, you know, all all of the the struggles and you know the day to day operation or kind of what are the, you know, businesses business challenges uh, that different you know enterprises or data centers are are facing. You know, we we get some of that, but you know, it's it's it just be useful to to get get people together and say, all right, here's here's everything I've seen, uh, maybe not everything, but, uh, you know, here's a, here's a bunch of work that I think is interesting, not just for myself, but, you know, from the community and, you know, present that and say, all right, you know, uh, if, if anybody here has, has had any, you know, experiences deploying, you know, whether it's SDN or NFB or they've at least thought about it and, you know, what have been their experiences or what is, what is holding them back or what got them excited um, you know, what if this research is, is important to them and, you know, just, just try to get a conversation going and yeah, bridge, bridge the gap. I remember back in the day, I would, I guess 2000 is when I was taking my intro to computer programming class when my professor was teaching the, uh, marvels of punch cards. And so for me, bridging the gap between academia and industry was always why in the hell am I learning punch cards when everyone <laughs> else is doing dot net already. But, but I, I hope it's not that bad anymore, basically. So. No, it's not. So, you know, the way I look at it is there's a lot of what is going on in industry, you know, in the, the kind of standards uh, bodies and kind of the SDN and NFB world has actually stemmed out of uh, efforts from um, academia. You know, like the Open Daylight is a, is a good example. And, you know, this is kind of um, championed by, you know, Cisco and others as the open flow controller uh, you know, that it's kind of getting wide adoption, but that, that actually was forked from a controller that a student at Stanford originally wrote called beacon. And so, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, there's, there's definitely same things that are going on in academia that I think could be of use to, to industry. So I, I don't think it's like two completely different worlds. We're, we're definitely interested in learning you know, what are the, the challenges, but we also want, uh, you know, we, we don't have to, uh, you know, deal with the, the day to day. So, you know, if, if, if you know, <laughs> none of us do event, take a break from the, the kind of day to day, you know, firefighting and, you know, say, all right, you know, let's, let's, let's think, uh, kind of where, where our network's going. Uh, you know, I think it'd be good fun. So your event is this Thursday. Same time as our podcast are made up, but that's all right. What type okay. of people or what type of uh, attendees do you want? Do you want to show up? I mean, are you talking? You want net, just network administrators? Do you want business folks? You want to? Do you want a mix of all both? Or I guess what are you looking for? Uh yeah, anybody that's interested. I, I think you know they don't have to be only in networking. Um, you know, if they kind of orchestrate, you know, the the you know virtual machines and things like that, and. Uh, want to learn more about the networking? Great. Um, you know, if, if you've never heard of SDN and or you've heard of it but you don't know anything about it, uh, yeah, that that's fine too. Um, so I, I think, you know, we, we're definitely interested in you know um, industry uh, participation that is you know running data centers, running enterprise networks. 
you know, has at least cons- thought about virtualized infrastructure. Um, you know, I, I welcome all, and you know, I'll be bringing some uh, some Colorado beers. Uh, Ooh, which ones? So, you know. okay. So when your event ends, oh, you come oh, to our event. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to, we'll have to, uh, you know, see when we get there. Oh well, yeah. So when your event ends, you come to our event. There you go. Yep. <laughs> we'll we'll still be going way past seven thirty. So because because we'll we also have good micro brew that'll be at our event. Right. So. Excellent. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's great. So it's, you know, a little little added bonus, but um, you know, I, I think it should be fun. Cool. Well, we'll post uh, the Eventbrite link on our Twitter and on our recap. Um, but if also, if you want to just Google robots that run your network at Techstars Detroit, um, you can find the Eventbrite listing. It is free to attend. There is no charge. Am I, uh, just to double check, that's correct still, right? Correct. It's, it's free. Okay. Yeah, it says free on the bottom. I just want to make sure otherwise. Um, I think it's like four bucks to park where where, uh, where the event's at. Right. But uh, any any last parting words before we, before we set you free? No, I, I, you know, I really appreciated you guys uh, giving us the time and and I look forward to to me and you guys in uh, in Detroit. Yeah, we'll we'll try to talk offline, get you get you to come out to our podcast or meet up afterwards if you got time. But uh, definitely, would like to uh, hook up with you guys while you're in town. Because yeah, there, I mean, there will be IT geeks at our event. Right, That's how that goes? So, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, Eric Keller. Right. Uh, Eric Keller, University of uh, Colorado, uh, doing an event this uh, this Thursday. Robots that run your network at TechStars Detroit. Definitely appreciate the time, and uh, hopefully we can uh, roll run into you while you're here. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks again, Eric. So, hey, uh, this is going to wrap things up for an episode 165. We got back to business this time uh, on behalf of uh, – Man, Bob we didn't and- talk about Comos. We didn't talk about the Commodore 64. Yeah, I think we could we take five minutes We didn't talk, talk about, about Westworld. We didn't talk about – Luke Cage. Netflix. We didn't we – did, we did, there so many things. All right. Let's come back. Okay. All right. We will uh, take a quick break. We're going to come back. we we'll talk about all those things. Uh, this is the <laughs> IT News Show, and we'll be right back. IT in the D. Read, meet, listen. Networking Detroit, one beer at a time. Hey, guys, it's Time Hog, Bruce Leroy from The Last Dragon. You're listening to the IT and D Show. IT in the D.com. This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D Show. Welcome back. Segment four. This is episode 165 of the one and only IT and the D show broadcasting here live. Podcast Detroit, beautiful Royal Oak, Michigan. This Bob the Sales Guy hanging out with Dave the Geek. Nuri the FNG is in the house. Randy the Twitter guy. We got to give you an official title because I don't like that one. Find us online, IT in the D.com because we. Or IT and the D and you <laughs> just just still I, I I love you but yeah no keep trying yeah, keep trying even, keep, even when you're here counting you you're still not no 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 <laughs> yeah didn't even get a thank you didn't even get flowers nothing just just you know love you so hey like I said uh, you know there there are a whole bunch of stories we didn't get to um, one of the ones and actually it ties in a little bit with the with the topic we were just talking about uh, Westworld uh, premiered last night on HBO oh my god I was. I had spent an entire weekend at a festival staying up to four and five in the morning doing things I shouldn't have been doing, and I still kept myself awake to watch that show. Somebody tell me what it is. So oh, Westworld, it's an old movie uh, with Yul Brenner and, and Kirk Douglas, a bunch of old, you know, but it's obviously been updated. It's got Anthony Hopkins in it, some like some decent names. Um, and it's, so it's about uh, basically a resort uh, that the wealthy can go to uh, where it's populated by robots. And it's Westworld, so it's the it's the old West. Um, it's it's going to be insane. Um, the, so it's not like the Wild Wild West Will Smith movie. No giant um, wooden spider. No, no Selma no <laughs> Selma Hayek or the Harrison Ford one or the no, I'm not the Harrison Ford one. The uh, Tommy Lee Jones one. Which was toilet? Tommy Lee Jones Western. Uh, Mon- was it Spiders versus Aliens? Aliens versus yeah, Cowboys. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cowboys. Spiders versus. Aliens. <sighs> that movie was, was the biggest horrible. block of toilet I've ever seen. Still in my better life. than R.I.P.D. Two or R.I.P.D. The one that came out because there was a sequel th- that bub- that bubbled up in my memories and I saw it and I I still believe whoever created that movie should be injected with life. Is that as good as Taxi with Queen La- 
Tifa and Jimmy <laughs> Fallon. Yes, it oh. was. It was as good. Because <laughs> let's, let's have a party and just watch those movies. That'd be awesome. But no, so, I mean, it's, so Westworld is going to be basically diving into the whole, you know, AI and, and what it means to life, uh, you know, what it means to human civilization. Um, and how do you tell that, you know, it the whole, you know, if uh, the Turing test and, and if a an intelligence is, is sufficiently advanced enough, will you be able to notice the difference between it and a human being? Um, and how does that tackle, you know, and it's, you know, kind of so like it's Blade Runner. Very it's similar. Um, and it's, you know, basically except it's a Western. Yeah. So just like um, what was it? Uh, True Blood uh, was basically um, a thinly veiled allegory uh, for the gay rights movement uh, with the vampires. Westworld is doing kind of the same thing with AI uh, where it's you know, like the it's, stupid sixth sense kid that wants to be human. I want to be human. No, I have that stupid human. movie. None that of that. Pinocchio. Yet. No, <laughs> the AI movie. It was called, wasn't it called AI? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Haley. I, other, I was thinking the six. Oh, you were talking about Haley Joel Osment. I, got I didn't know what his name was. <laughs> so it, it feels like a Western. I'd say 80% of it's Western. Yeah. But then the last 20% is in this company's headquarters where they're working yep. on robots, which is really stark, really futuristic. And it provides a really interesting foil to so the they Western. They drink like sarsaparilla that. and. Oh, it's it's crazy. It's it's absolutely. <laughs> no, crazy. I missed it. I missed it because I was binge watching Luke Cage all weekend. Gotcha. Well, well, how? I mean, it was down Saturday. I did. Well, we were at the con yeah. Sunday. <laughs> Sunday, I started when I got home from Monroe Comic Con and watched. Then my wife got in like an episode two right in the middle, and we sat there till. So you had to go back and watch the first one again. Yeah, that's then we how sat there till yeah. twelve thirty. We got to got through seven. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. I haven't watched that one yet. It's a. Uh, it's. It, it's really, really, really – it's slow, but then it's good, and then it's great. But, like, it bothered me because Luke Cage looks like Pedro Serrano. And, <laughs> like, if, so if you're over the age of 35, you're going to you're gonna either – like, either he's going to be, like, the Allstate guy for, like, under 35 or over 35, he's, he's Pedro Serrano. Da- Daniel Hastert? The yeah. The guy, the Allstate guy? Joe yeah. Boo. Uh, Owen Travers yeah. was posting that people were saying he looked like him. It looked like Owen Travers. Yeah, the XICW. No, <laughs> looks like Pedro Serrano, Joe Boo. But um, there was a little bit of um, not much, uh, but a little bit of uh, cut over with Daredevil. Gotcha. Um, like one of the guys, like, hey, I, sh- I should just go back to Hell's Kitchen where it's safe, you know, that type of thing. But right. it was, it was uh, the story setup was very well done on the, like the origin. It start like it, it's typical superhero, right? It starts off with with a, with a bang. Then it goes back to origin. Then it does backstory, right? But like Anthony Hardaway's mom from Blue Chips is like one of the bad really? guys, <laughs> right? It's like everybody was something else. It's like you should just stop with the. I remember you from. I remember you from. Right, yeah. right. Um, but no, it's very well written. It's it's very well. It was you know. It's, I'll it's give it a watch. It's one of those binge watch. We're like, okay, I gotta watch the next one. Okay, I gotta watch the next one. See, I gotta finish off Chuck because uh, I just saw when I was watching. So I'm on season five now, uh, catching you know doing the whole binge. I missed that show. So, so it, well, it's only available on Netflix till November first. I saw the message today when I was watching one of them. So but you, ne- Netflix is so an yeah, asshole. This month. They yeah. dropped um, season two of Narcos. What I no. still haven't seen. The where where the disco and hip hop blend, I think it was like not roll bounce. I don't know what I want to call it. I was like, um, that was that weird roller skating movie. No, no, no. Yeah. This it was like the era, like right when Grandmaster Flash was breaking in. Okay, and it's kind of like the 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 transition from, and it looked amazing in the in the trailer. So now I got to binge that. And, and Netflix is being asshole because now you're consuming all my time. And now they're also taking away fifty percent of their titles since just a few years ago. But we'll get there. Interesting. Yeah, did you see that? They, their library has shrunk 50%. Basically, they've decided they're going to start focusing on more original content, and that money means that they're basically not... It's all good, so... Well, it, yeah, yeah, it's great, but I mean, who are you going to go to when you want to watch an old movie from like five years ago or ten years Hulu, ago? Hulu, Amazon only, Prime. Yeah. The only reason I have... Um, and then I'm paying for cable again. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Crackle. No, the only reason I have HBO is for Ballers and Vice Principals. The only reason I have Showtime is for Ray Donovan. You know, it's not like I'm like, oh, wait, Back to the Future 3 is on. I want to watch that again. No, I don't uh, care. Bob, Bob, what you need to do is get a couple of girlfriends like I do, and then you can get their parents' accounts for HBO, Hulu, and uh, <laughs> love you, Jessica. What are you, 17? Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Can I have your password, Uncle Bob? So he's simultaneously <laughs> hanging out in everyone's mom's basement, is what right. <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much. 
Well, no, I mean it's and you know that's and you know I'm I'm I've got the main TV in the living room uh, completely cut off from cable, uh, so you know I'm good there getting the other two two TVs done. Um, and it is, I mean, like you know you can get HBO Go, you know, as a standalone app now. You can get Showtime, you know, as a standalone app. But yeah, I mean, then to your point, you know, at what at what point do you just get back to crap? I'm paying my cable bill again. That's right. But I need my Ray Donovan. If I didn't have my Ray Donovan, like, that's the whole point. Like, how, I guess how much is Ray Donovan worth? It's worth all the things. It sounds like they're making a really compelling case for piracy. This oh. show brought to you by piracy. Right, yeah. This show brought to you by BitTorrent. Don't, yeah, just, <laughs> don't use that as a secret word. Please don't. LimeWire is responsible for destroying more laptops yeah, in Lime this country. Yeah, LimeWire. Everything, all your music is free, but you need a new laptop every three months. We right. remember those days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bear share. I'll never forget when we when I worked at Vario and we, all, we were in basically had an OC3 directly to the Chicago nap and we just had Bear share. Bear share and LimeWire open. I'm and not, we couldn't think of enough music to pull. We were pulling so much. I'm not familiar with this bear share. That was a bunch of pictures of like hairy guys. No. No. So, no. no. Napster. And then Napster fall down and go boom. Uh, Kazaa next, And then right? you had the rise of Kazaa, yeah, right. Windmesh, uh, Bear Share, LimeWire. You know, there was a whole bunch of basically Napster clones that came out. Um, bear Share was solid for a while. And then it started getting flooded with. Yeah, it was you know, quiet in the beginning. And, yeah. Right. New Britney Spears CD dot mp3 dot exe right See, the yeah. problem was like then they would flood then they got smart and they flooded them with like they would trash the song like you would get like because i remember i was djing at the post and i was pulling songs oh. and then all of a sudden you'd hear like hypothetically speaking yeah remix by dj right like, but it would oh, have like yeah, yeah, yeah it I'm would have this. the normal file name and then you, and, you know you download Hundreds of songs yeah. at a time, so you wouldn't go back and listen. You to listen them to all. the first ten seconds. Okay, it's a song, and then they would bear, they would throw that. So like the I think the record companies were getting smart and kind of destroying. Mm-hmm. Or they music. put the first thirty seconds and the last thirty seconds of the song in the middle. Have it just be a bunch of stuttering. Uh, yeah, I remember that that would piss me off so bad. Oof. Yeah, also one of those things. Uh, so, but uh, speaking of old technology, uh, you know, we talked for a while, a while ago about the uh, the old computer in Grand Rapids uh, that's still running the heating and cooling systems for all the schools. Uh, apparently, there's an auto shop that is still running their entire operation on a Commodore 64 for the past 25 years. What um, are they running? It has been rained on. It has been crapped on by birds. It has been <laughs> just you know beaten all to hell and gone. They had pictures of it and everything, but yeah. 25 years, and they're, they're, they're still running the same invoice, and they were like... What, did the lemonade stand, and they changed the name to the auto shop? No, they, they were like, we don't, you know, that was the state-of-the-art software when we bought it 25 years ago. It still does our invoicing. It, it still balances does it. drive shafts. Yeah. The thing balances <laughs> drive shafts. It, 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 it still works. If five and a quarter inch floppy drive. Yeah, it, it still has a five and a quarter inch floppy drive, and it's my, still uh, up and running. I, my, I still have my Commodore in my dad's basement. It's still sitting there, and it weighs the 1541 hard drive. I think weighs like 18 pounds. It is a Oof. brick of humanity. It is that the Ugh. power supply on those things weigh like eight pounds each. That thing, and the, not just that, the keys on the keyboard. Have you ever typed oh, that one of those things, dude? It's like the clutch in your old vet. Yeah. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> Do people pay good money for those clanky mechanical keyboards nowadays? Good money. I should look and see what they go for on eBay <laughs> there you or go. on Facebook Marketplace. Oh, right, because that's going to be a thing now. Right. Yeah, I, I, honestly, like, I get it. I mean, there are a ridiculous number of, like, swap, sell, meetup groups on Facebook already. I'm a member of two. I checked out Marketplace today. It's somebody posted a picture of, like, a drinking straw and a wadded up napkin for $7. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. Uh, it's the Wish Cup. It's the Q, what QVC puts out at three in the morning. It's a styrofoam cup with some crayon on it and a quarter in it for twenty dollars. And some guy in rural Idaho is like, "I gotta have that cup." Is drunk and orders it. Yeah, it was Lou Black. Like back in the <laughs> yeah. Day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we'll see how, see how Facebook Marketplace goes. Um, speaking of of going um, and then going and and then gone, um, Como's. Now, if you're not familiar, if you're not from Metro Detroit, Como's was a mainstay right on the corner of Nine and Woodward in in fashionable Ferndale, where our old Forever. studio was. And that place had like a huge deck right on the main drag. Second deck? 
uh, it had a yeah, it had a second deck like a private <laughs> private area that we we actually had events there a few times. Yeah, they were open late, so if you were drunk and out of the clubs and you wanted to slice at four in the morning, I right? Think they were pretty much the only thing open in Ferndale. Yeah, then they had like that seventies bar, like the Regal Beagle Bar, like to the to the left. Yeah, we walked in. And then they served a bunch of alcohol to minors, but you know they got through that. Well, that so that was cool. la- so yeah. Last December, they had issues with their liquor license, and they lost that for a while, and that got rectified. Now they're shut down. Like like shut down, shut down, shut down, shut down um, for an amazing and and I cannot stress the word amazing enough. Amazing number of health code violations. Uh, I'm disgusted that I ever ate food in that place. Dude, after reading through the like just slew of violations that place had, I'm I I'm almost mad at the inspectors that it wasn't shut down years ago. I think they fought for many years of this. Basic things like not having proper hand washing, having cups sitting next to like I, people like, smoking in the kitchen. Well, my dad no, did that for owner, years. That was the owner smoking. There was cigarette butts found in every nook and cranny of that place. I, I'll be that like that doesn't bother me. People putting their yeah. jackets and hats and coats next above, to the open food above the open. Yeah, yeah, and you know the food that was expired uh, by weeks, if not months, that Ooh. they found in the kitchen. Whoa. Cooked food with raw food. Yeah, so I mean it was just yeah, basically anything and everything that could go wrong in a restaurant they had go wrong there. So yeah, they're uh, goodbye. And now it's going to be a BW threes. Right. Or, hey, another black fan. That's, that's yeah, what yeah, the I world means. I think Ferndale's going to be really careful with this one because if Ferndale becomes Royal Oak, all those hipsters are moving out. Right. <laughs> um, also from the Bad Idea Department, uh, NBC greenlit a show, NBC shut down a show. Um, Meal Order Family. Sounds like an interesting premise, Someone right? Someone thought it would be a great idea to go ahead and greenlight a show um, about a man who gets a mail order bride from the Philippines. Um, and and apparently the wacky hijinks that ensue <laughs> hilarity ensues from sex trafficking. Up That's- next on NBC <laughs> again. Let's go back to the boardroom. Right, hey guys, it's great idea. Got, got this idea for show. Let's name yeah. our company Rim. Right, right, yeah. hey, that too. <laughs> and then hire people. <laughs> got this guy. You know, he plays a lot of World of Warcraft. Doesn't date much, and just wants to order himself a bride and. Watch the hilarity ensue. Yeah. And and so, like I said, I mean, I, I kind of get it because the guy that wrote the show and pitched the show, it's his own life experience. Like, his dad did this. Like, got a mail order bride from the Philippines. Um, so, I mean, it's not like somebody was just trying to be a jerk. Uh, you know, a guy thought, you know, his own life was kind of funny and, and should be a TV show. And, yeah. Well, you know what? My, my grandfather was a... Screaming racist uh, doesn't mean alcoholic doesn't really mean I'm going to be writing a show about life with grandpa. Archie Bunker? So. Yeah, Your basically. Grandpa was Archie Bunker? My grandfather was Archie oh, Bunker. Oh, cool. <laughs> I talked to a scriptwriter once and he said that there were two types of scripts for mainstream consumption. One was uh, regular people in strange situations and the other is strange people in regular situations. Those are the two that really make compelling TV. So I get it. It seems so. Like friends I, and Big Bang Theory. There we go. <laughs> it, it, it fits. And this guy, if he's a, a normal guy who orders a mail order bride, that's a normal person in an unusual situation. I guess I kind of see it, but you're right. You're you're making a, a comedic television show out of a really serious thing. Yeah. So give me give me facts of life, different strokes. That like, um, that's all. You know, boarding school girls and you know, <laughs> ad- adopted, adopted children of your of your not race. Like and then, you know, <laughs> and let's see what I don't. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Apparently, the uh, Galaxy Notes are not the only things exploding uh, right about now. Uh, I believe it was a, an iPhone that exploded in the back pocket of a student. Oh, where are the memes from the, our Apple friends now, huh? Yeah. They decided to give us a bunch of shit for owning Galaxies. It was for a 6S, too. This is a phone that's been out in the market for a long time, but... Uh, there was the Samsung tablet that fell down on an airplane the other day between the seat and the wall that lit on fire. Yeah. There's a lot of incidents lately. There, What's just, going on? Like, apparently, I didn't even know that Samsung made washing machines. Apparently, there are 23 incidents of their washing machines catching on fire now. They I have contain, a Samsung washing machine at home. Do they contain lithium batteries in a washing machine? I, I hope not. I, no. I, okay. The uh, drum gets out of balance with, like, uh, comforters, stuff like that, and it just sends shrapnel everywhere. I thought you were going to say, like, the drum is coated with, like, the same stuff they coat matchsticks with. <laughs> and when it gets out of balance, it just strikes. You know? <laughs> so I, apparently I heard the new hotness is, you know, that $5,000 Samsung refrigerator. Um, the new yeah. hotness oh, is going to Best it. Buy and changing the web browser to Pornhub and running. 
I can see that a patch in three, two, one patch. Right. Well, I remember. So like back when I was like 16, 17, the hotness then was grabbing like a two short cassette and going in the speaker aisle at the stereo aisle at Sears and putting the cassette into the loudest speaker, loudest stereo they had and turning it on full blast and then like running around the aisle. Uh-huh. And then they would, hee hee, it's funny, bass is, they're shaking signs and watch the guy, <laughs> the sales guy clerk panic. Well, now the, this is going to be the the next big thing. Well, and the other fun thing to do with your cassettes, which you know, kind of alluded to at the end of segment one, uh, Teddy Ruxpin is making a comeback. And I'm sorry, but kids today will never, ever know the fun and joy of putting an NWA cassette in Teddy Ruxpin and seeing an adorable little teddy bear singing straight out of Compton. F the police. It was amazing. See, we were Black more Sabbath, Ozzy. Yeah, yeah, see, we were more a heavy metal household with our Teddy Ruxpin. Um, <laughs> it was much more enjoyable. We didn't really put the the, the hip hop or the rap in there. Um, just watching them, you know, how, bark at the moon and <laughs> Slayer, um, some Misfits, perhaps no, Ozzy, punk. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Never a bad it, day. The Furby didn't work. This isn't working. It yeah. isn't working. Wasn't a fan with the Furby. No one's gonna care. Uh, there, there was uh, a story that you know just from uh, an end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. Um, the Hadron Collider computer system is people running. Are, people are talking about the apocalypse like there's no tomorrow. Yes, like it's 1999. Yeah. Uh, the Hadron Collider system is running out of disk space. <laughs> that's that's a problem. Well, like a three terabyte drive is like 89 bucks. Exactly. Now. Go to Best Buy, buy yeah. a couple hundred terabyte drives. Yeah, and be they're, done with they're it. on Amazon. They'll deliver them to you for free, private, with a drone. free shipping. Or yeah, maybe it's in pure storage, possibly. Oh, so I get a flash oh. array and be done with it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, don't know. How does it like it doesn't have any like additional USB ports? <laughs> like you can't. <laughs> where do you put a USB port on the Hadron Collider? I don't just know. Where do you, what's it? How is it? A uh, SCSI attachment? I SCSI attachment? Like what? How do you attach it? There's USB ports apparently in walls uh, around the world from the hidden caching stuff that's going on. You can put a USB. There's port a USB on port on the UFO in Independence. That's how they uploaded the virus. They're everywhere. <laughs> no, that was wireless. <laughs> no, I thought he plugged in the USB port. No, no, because that was the, the Mac talked over an alien network to an alien computer system when it could at the time couldn't communicate with 95 percent of the business networks on earth but it connected just fine to a wireless well, apparently network. jeff goldblum's laptop wasn't here because the wi-fi here sucks now <laughs> they're making a second one of those did you see that independence day yeah. oh, it's already been yeah. out it's already out yeah did it crash and burn yeah yes. oh yeah okay good thanks yeah will smith had nothing to do with okay, it Okay, great i now have yeah. humanity ne- neither did uh cousin eddie because he's crazy now well yeah and that's a sad thing when he's passing on stuff you gotta well he died in the first one Oh yeah, he drove up the thing. Yeah, <laughs> uh, maybe he couldn't have had. He couldn't have had a big part. If you could into, upload a virus you via could bring wireless, cousin Eddie back. you could bring cousin Eddie back from the dead. <laughs> he survived. He was in like a little bubble. Luke Cage was surrounding him while he went into the thing. Big bear hug. Yeah, yeah, that's how it works. All right. Well, hey, uh, we good? Yeah, I'm great. Phenomenal. Full of Telway burgers. Thanks I'm to Randy. Full Thanks, Randy. Belly. So, hey, uh, one last time, don't forget, uh, this Thursday, October 6th, we'll be over at Activate Gaming for our podcaster meetup. On the 20th, we'll be at the Blackfin for our casual uh, casual networking meetup that's going to be going on. Uh, yeah, and uh, take a second and go to podcastsurvey.org and fill that out for us. It's real quick and easy. In fact, I just breeze through it. There's no personal information collected. Um, and the password is Magic Jack. It's not really a password, but the magic phrase that you want to know is, or that we want you to know is Magic Jack. So on behalf of Magic Jack, and uh, we appreciate our awesome guest, Rajiv Das, the CSO of the State of Michigan, Eric Keller from uh, the University of Colorado. We had a, uh, we got back to our geek roots, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy for that. This has been an awesome episode 165 of the IT the D Show. On behalf of Bob, David, Nuri, and Randy, I'd like to thank you for your time spent. We greatly appreciate it. But do us all a favor. Drink up your drinks. Get your phone numbers. You don't got to go home. You just got to get the hell out of here. Drive careful. Beat it. See you. Emergency destruct system is now activated. Conan, what is best in life? To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentation of the women. Long live Flash! You've saved your ass. Have a nice day. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Nice shooting, son. What's your name? Murphy. Make the run. The run. The run. Game over, man. Game over.
It's over, Johnny. It's over! Nothing is over! Nothing! You just don't turn it off! I just, I can't say no, and I don't really want to, so... Well, especially with the back doors open. Yo! Hold up! Time out! Time out! Y'all take a chill! You need to cool that shit out! And that's the double truth, Ruth. Bob loves it in the camp. I hope this was as much fun for you as it was for me. Mm. That's why I like it in the can. Joe, the truth. Oh, 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 oh. Fear me. <laughs> My job is to make sure this program is morally upright and cultural and wholesome. Shut up, Mimsy. Shut up, Mimsy. Shut up, Mimsy. Why would, like... Buick put their cars next to like the Bentleys. Like, why is this not marketing? Um, the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. Yeah, I can't take that position. That analogy sucks because it's right. Because you're getting your eight track tuned up. <laughs> Are we at a break yet? No! Yeah, so now I'm just like doing like stupid stuff to make me laugh. Venture capital is not the end game. When are we going to talk about me? Jane, you ignorant slut. It's my show. I can say what I want. Yeah. Kiss my ass. <laughs> go home. <laughs> unplug. <laughs> get off the goddamn <laughs> internet. You are everything that is wrong with the internet right now. You're so white right now. <laughs> I, I'm the whitest guy in the room. Just explain it to me. <laughs> show now. I love this city. I was banging oh, on the yeah. way. Really? Should we talk about this? Tag team. Should I keep going or should I stop? Can I just say, it's been great being on a show that talks about Mickey Rooney dying for 20 seconds and then poop for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> this is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D Show.